Sometimes I long for the days of navigating DOS directories for my favorite shareware game demos and messing around with Windows 3.1's custom wallpaper pattern grid. <laughs> the sound of the floppy disk drives and CD drives fill my heart with nostalgia. I've recently been inspired by the vintage computing community and the YouTube channels in that space to finally take a stab at finding and restoring the type of computer I remember so fondly from my childhood. After scanning my local buy and sell apps for days on end, I realized that these types of computers are really hard to find in my area. But I eventually tracked down this hideous thing, an IBM Aptiva desktop from computer from 1996. I brought it home and gave it a wipe down on the outside and I realized quickly that the bottom is very rusty and it's far more scratched than I anticipated. Immediately I don't expect the case to be salvageable to any reasonable degree. Fortunately, looking at the parts inside, for the most part, they don't share the same grim fate of the case. I snooped around a bit, but I figured trying to see if it boots or at least gets into the BIOS would be the best way to learn about the system. So I brought it into my little workshop where a CRT monitor I got for free was already waiting. Admittedly, I'm going into this a bit blind because I really wasn't aware of how hardware worked when I was under 10 years old. I'd be surprised if Windows 98 had plug and play USB drivers, for example, and I recall recently throwing out my last USB to PS2 adapter, so I don't know if a mouse and keyboard will even work on it. It's funny, I had several of those adapters floating around my space throughout my entire life, including a few moves just in case I needed it, and somehow I throw it out just weeks before I get this thing. Ridiculous. But I'm sure my local thrift store will have some old peripherals kicking around if that's the case, and we'll go from there. It turned out that it doesn't matter right now anyway, because when I powered everything on, I got very little. I was pleased to hear fans whirring and see general signs of life, but some things seemed to be missing. There was less activity on the floppy drive and hard drive noise than I'd expect, and no signal went out to the monitor because there's no onboard graphics capabilities on the chip and it doesn't have a graphics card. I tested this monitor previously on a more modern system and I was pleased to find that it works really well, so that's exciting and I don't need to look for anything more on that front. I did some bare minimum research on this thing beforehand. It's a Model 2193 which only shipped with an AMD K6 uh, two processor, but the model apparently does support an Intel Pentium 3 as well, so we'll have to confirm what's inside later. I don't want to begin tearing it down until I get a video card and see its actual starting state. I see several signs of upgrades though, since the heatsink suggests that it has an Intel chip, it's sporting a hefty 256 megabytes of RAM as opposed to the 64 megabytes that it would have shipped with, and the CD drive is far newer than the rest of the system. I haven't found found out yet if the motherboard is stock or not, or if that's been upgraded. At any rate, this is going to be an adventure in multiple parts, but I'm excited so far. My relative lack of experience and budget limitations and any possible parts sourcing issues could make this take a while, uh, and I'm really excited to do this for the long haul. I'm going to do some research and probably visit a thrift store to find any peripherals and related things they may have, and determine my best route forward uh, as I wait for a video card to arrive. This is only a small analysis to kick this project off, but I'm excited to update it as I work. And if you like old tech and want to follow along, make sure to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes.